the hell did I just watch? That was... Oh, I'm live! Hello, welcome again to the Hobo and his Girlfriend Wrestling Show. My name is Hobo Tom. Let me center myself. Kind of ashamed to wear this shirt. Just watched... WWE Crown Jewel. Had some wine. I'm um, rehydrating myself with some cream soda. See, sweetie? Cream soda. Good for you. And you are watching the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Show here on YouTube. And I'm Hobo Tom. I gotta go see my sweetie tomorrow. At the Claremont, Claremont Art Festival out there in Claremont, Florida, so that should be a good time. For some reason I didn't have to work. Well, I did have to work, but I said, eh, eh, I'm not working. I have to see my girlfriend. My girlfriend, she wrote me a letter. Oh, how does that song go? My girlfriend, she wrote me a letter. Oh. No. An aeroplane. I don't have time to catch a fast train. Lonely days are gone. How am I going home? My girlfriend, she sent me a letter. And then she wrote me a letter. And I couldn't believe all the things she had to say. Come on, mister, can't you see? I gotta see my girlfriend in the worst of all possible ways. Get me a ticket for an aeroplane. I don't have time to catch a fast train. Lonely days are gone. I'm a going home. My baby, she wrote me a letter. I hope that doesn't get me copyrighted. That's an original song, YouTube. Shame on you. Copywriting so many people. Should have probably copyrighted WWE for their crown jewel. Almost feel ashamed to wear such an amazing shirt. This had potential to be either very good or very bad. And it was such a mix. The first half of the show was amazing. Last two matches. Well, not that bad, but I guess the Saudis got their money worth for it. I mean, all stuff being considered with the whole nonsense with Saudi Arabia. I'm not here for a political commentary. I can semi-understand why, I guess, Daniel Bryan didn't want to go. He's a lot more politically active, I think. A little bit more liberal. John Cena, uh, he's like, why do I want to go? I have movies to make. I'm making piles of money. Enough said about that, though. I'd like to thank everyone for watching this. Please like, share, and subscribe. Again, it's a Red Wine Friday. I just finished my yummy, delicious chicken fiesta pizza. My nice little Chris Fresco. And just having some cream soda kind of wash everything down. Get myself ready for tomorrow. And I'm here to talk about Crown Jewel. <sighs> Do I have to? Yes, I will. But I decided that I'm going to make... Yeah, I'm talking about pro wrestling a little more part of my life. Now that I'm getting back into it a little bit. We'll see what happens in the future. Um, I know even when I didn't watch WWE, I still watch a lot of the indie stuff. So I might go with that. But hey, WWE might shock me. In a couple of programming notes, I'm going to put off... My Lucha Underground review probably until Sunday. 
And then Monday will be Raw, Tuesday SmackDown. Friday, definitely Lucha Underground. Since Saturday, yeah, going to go back to NXT. So everyone's going to have a live NXT show to watch. So again, look for that. Probably Saturday night I'll post that. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Again, like, share, comment, subscribe. And you can also email at hopelandgirlfriend at gmail.com. I don't want to spend too much time on that. Other shows do that. It's nonsense. I want to start for the Hulk Hogan preview. Hulk, sir. Um, it wasn't bad. I mean, I could see why if the Saudis are going to pay piles of money, like Florida house sized piles of money, bring out Hulk Hogan. They want Hulk Hogan. They're paying for Hulk Hogan. He didn't say anything spectacular. I mean, there was nothing incendiary. Again, my things on Hulk Hogan, he comes from I mean, a little older generation. Um, when things come to his daughter, I'm sure he gets more emotional. I mean, you're talking about a man. I, again, um, a lot of really good wrestlers. Hulk Hogan is at 11. Harry Bowell is probably, probably that five. So it's not like, like, really, this is the same guy that goes, brother, promos. And I'm going to let Hulkamania run wild on you. So, I mean, what do you expect? I think I just broke my video. My video camera just like not like to do too many fast images at once. The thing I did like about this, they had fireworks. They had fireworks at the wazoo. Honk your horn and raise your hand if you remember when w every WWE match started with fireworks. I do. But again, I like fireworks. I mean, he got paid a, probably a boatload of money to, to say what he said. Nothing spectacular. It's, the thing is, I understand it because he really got the crowd excited. If Hulk Hogan's going to get the crowd excited, say, here, Hulk, $1 million. Just say something for, I don't even think it'll last 10 minutes. Again, get the crowd hyped. Get them excited. Get the blood flowing. I understand that. I know there's a lot of backlash. Saudi Arabia, politics aside, Hulk Hogan, his stuff aside. This is a wrestling match. This is a theater of the absurd. Enjoy it for what it is. Trust me, eventually you're not going to see this stuff. Again, I still feel special in the fact that I got to see the Macho Man Randy Savage wrestle. I mean, he passed maybe a little too early. I mean, I know people at the gym I go to that, that are so excited about the prospects of Kenny Omega coming to WWE. They'll get to see Kenny Omega on TV. Regular, well, for the most part, regular TV. And, no, he's going to skip NXT. We might see Hangman Page, though, in NXT. And the Crown Jewel, also in NXT. The Young Bucks might come to NXT just to get used to the WWE feel things. And then, like, be here for a month and say, okay, me and here we come. Smackdown. Or have them go against the club. OG Bullet Club versus. The Golden Elite. That would be fun. Kenny Omega and the Young Bucks versus AJ Styles and the Bullet Club. Or the Club. I'd pay good money. So again, we have a Hulk Hogan promo here at Crown Jewel. 
And it starts off with the best superstar in the world, I guess. So we had Rey Mysterio Jr. versus Randy Orton. I was shocked. One, they did fireworks for every match. You do fireworks for every match. Yeah. I mean, this was really fun. Ray's in a singlet now? I don't know. It just looked kind of weird. I just remember Ray either being the full body suit from WCW or just being really in the regular tight and leggings from WWE and Lucha Underground. But hey, whatever he feels like wearing. Um, this was a really fun match. Fun stuff. Randy Orton, even though he's a bigger, stronger guy, still really agile. I mean, Ray still has it, though. I mean, Randy's strong, but agile enough to, and knows enough about Ray. Um, Ray did win when he stacked up Randy Orton, but then Randy Orton was upset. As a heel, this is what you want to see out of your heel. And he beat him down after the match. Weakened them up. Good stuff. This is your classic, really fun, really good surf and turf quality match. And then the next SmackDown match was Jeff Hardy versus The Miz. This was also really good, too. And they had the fireworks. They had everything. They had the whole grandeur of it. Um, the seating looked amazing. I mean, if you were in the first five rows first, I think the, the hard camera seats were all, like, either leather or microfabric bucket chairs. And it looks so comfy. Oh. I know at ma major WWE shows, if you do get first or second ring seats, I want to say you, you literally pay for the seat. Because you guys to take the seat home, and they do have this little special padding. But these have, like, comfy... I think it's better than my freaking living room seats. My seats, my grandmother had are so comfy. I mean, they're just, they're just like, they're like, ah. Oh. Yes. So what do you think about this match? Yes, this is good. Yes. Let me have a non carbonated, non caffeinated beverage. I don't think they're allowed to drink alcohol per se. I want to say part of Islam, and this is really aging me, that they're not really supposed to drink alcohol. I'm sure if they have a beer or wine, I think they can have that. And I think there are certain prescriptions. Again, when you get into the upper class, that, that's a whole different environment. And if you could get those front row seats, trust me, you're one of the upper class sheiks. Again, I don't know what they, they, they call their headgear, but they all have that on. They all have their white robes. It would be like going to an old-timey boxing match where instead of seeing scrubs like me wearing, wearing kind of the boxer's T-shirts, you had men actually dressed in a shirt and tie and sometimes even a jacket. So it just felt like that. It felt really higher upper class, and you knew the delineation. Because after the first four or five rows, there was a huge spacing gap. Yeah. And you really knew who royalty were. I don't want to say commoners, but the more regular folk, probably the upper middle class or lower upper class. Because they were the ones wearing the wrestling t-shirts. The Sheiks all had their, their white robes on. I know there's some fancy name for them. I don't know, I don't know what it is. But 
again, the Hardy versus the Miz match, this was, again, a really fun match. Um, Hardy busted out the, the delete, or actually for Jeff Hardy, the obsolete turnbuckle things. And there was good stuff in and out of the ring. Um, but the Miz did go for the dirty pin. Classic heel. The Miz did get the win. This was a fun cheeseburger match. And then at the end of the show, I'm going to recap some stuff. Go over... Oh, wait. I didn't make any predictions. That filthy vagabondo made predictions. I was out hoboing. Yeah. How the heck did that vagabond get in my office? Darn. i lock my doors better. Cheese pup, where are you? You have to attack El Vagabundo next time. And then we had Seth versus Lashley. Again, a really another fun match. I mean, Lashley is much more powerful. Leo Rush looked like a million bucks. He came out in like a gold thread vest. Looked amazing. That was just a lively match. Um, Lashley, again, he's so strong. Seth is so much more agile and quick. Again, those leather pocket seats were amazing looking. I mean, that's how to live for a wrestling match. Again, but this was a really fun match. Um, nothing more than what you expected, really. Especially from this particular clash of styles. I mean, it was a fun cheeseburger match. And again, this there was a Roman sign. So again, Roman Reigns, we are all behind you. I can only do that so often, so I'm not going to put my... You know what? I will, just for this once. Roman Reigns, you go beat that leukemia. Um, the next match, we had Kurt Angle versus Zolf Ziggler. This started off as a very technical match. This was amazing. I love technical wrestling matches. Started off very uh, collegiate style, very freestyle wrestle, wrestling style, kind of that, that Olympic wrestling style. I think the Saudis really like that because that's really all they get to see is, is Olympic wrestling. And again, this was an amazing match. Kurt Angle still has it. I mean, it was a good, fun, really technical match. I mean, Dolph seemed to be in the ankle lock forever. He got out of one angle slam. Drew did try to get involved, though. So, um, eventually, Dolph did get the super kick in, and he won the match. And this was a really, it was a really, again, a really fun, and because it was a technical wrestling and collegiate style, I'm going to give this a surf and turf rating. And now let's go to the next match because now we have the four qualifiers. And I wondered how they were going to do this. But the, so they have the four qualifiers and they got a break. Because then the next match. Which was amazing too, was the New Day versus Bar. Again, this was such a good, fun match. I couldn't believe this. The New Day are so good at face double teams. They had Francesca being played in the background, trombone playing. It was fun. This felt just like a fun wrestling match. I don't know why they, why WWE can't do this. On a regular basis. This was amazing. I mean, it was just a really good match. The bar knows how to pull off heel tag team tactics like distracting the referee and shoving the guy. 
I mean, it was fun, active by both. Um, Biggie gets a hot. T um, the Biggie get um the Big Show gets involved. It's just really. F I mean, I kind of I see this as the SmackDown Tag Champions, and I want to know what are they going to do with all tag team champions. Cause that's that's sitting in, in like in like that limbo space of like oh who wants this belt? There's so much stuff behind that belt. I don't even know what's happening with that belt now, now that Dean turned on Seth. He gets a hot tag and the Big Show gets involved again. When the referee is distracted, classic tag team heel antics and. The bar retain. Again, this was an um, this was a really darn good, fun, action-packed surf and turf match. And then I'm gonna take a quick break, break, break. the hell did I just watch? That was... Oh, I'm live! Hello, welcome again to the Hobo and Girlfriend Wrestling Show. My name is Hobo Tom. Let me center myself. Kind of ashamed to wear this shirt. Just watched WWE Crown Jewel. Had some wine. Um, rehydrating myself with some cream soda. See, sweetie, cream soda. Good for you. And you are watching the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Show here on YouTube. And I'm Hobo Tom. I gotta go see my sweetie tomorrow at the Claremont, Claremont Art Festival. Out there in Claremont, Florida, so that should be a good time. For some reason, I didn't have to work. Well, I did have to work. But I said, eh, eh, I'm not working. I have to see my girlfriend. My girlfriend, she wrote me a letter. Oh, how does that song go? My girlfriend, she wrote me a letter. Oh. No. An aeroplane. I don't have time to catch a fast train. Lonely days are gone. How am I going home? My girlfriend, she sent me a letter. And then she wrote me a letter. And I couldn't believe all the things she had to say. Come on, mystery, can't you see? I gotta see my girlfriend in the worst of all possible ways. Get me a ticket for an aeroplane. I don't have time to catch a fast train. No. And I am back. And let's go over the second half of the show, because that was also really good and really... Uh, well... Obscure. So then for the second round, you had The Miz versus Rey Mysterio. Miz is smart. He knows Rey Mysterio's tired. He goes for a series of quick pins. Again, the smart tactical wrestler. I can I can identify with that. I, I like that. It means he's showing brains versus bronze. And again, it's all about the Miz and his style that he wrestles. His style that he wrestles. But it's it's good. I mean, it's cons it's consistent. But yet it's still exciting. You don't know exactly what's going to happen. But you can get an idea. Again, Miz is a classic ring technician. The opportunistic heel. Goes for a couple of quick roll-up attempts on Rey Mysterio. Rey's still a little beat up from the RKO beatdown. I mean, Rey can still do some amazing stuff, though. Wow. That's all I have to say about Rey. That's wow. However, the Miz is a little bit smarter, though. The Miz does win. Picks up the, the win. But this was such a a well thought out fun match. 
This is a surf and turf match. Then we have the second match, which was Stealth and Dolph. It was good. I think my only problem with this match is that I've seen this so often when they were feuding for the Intercontinental title. Nothing really new popped out. Drew still tried to interfere. It was good, don't get me wrong. But it's all stuff that you've seen before. And granted, maybe the Saudis haven't seen this before. This might be new to them. This is like the sixth time I've seen it, though. So with that, yeah. I mean, Dolph won. Um, Drew tried to interfere. Again, it's all stuff I saw before. So, I mean, with that said... They did have a really good pace of it. But it was a che it was a cheeseburger match. This is what it was. The Saudis really seem to enjoy it. Sixth time I've seen it. I mean I'm not gonna give it a Turf rating, it was the sixth time I've seen this match. I was kind of wavering this on the ham sandwich, but the crowd really see, the crowd really turned the crowd really turned me. The crowd seemed to really eat it up and enjoy it. So therefore the crowd enjoys it. You know what? I'm not gonna poo-poo the crowd. Hobo Tom will enjoy it too. Then we get two matches. The one AJ versus Samoa Joe. I could watch you for forever. I fully enjoy the fact that AJ Styles chooses to wear the belt and not just carry it over his shoulder, like like something that that's that's to be carried in and not. Worn. AJ Styles carried the belt and he carries himself. Like an old school NWA championship. I know in New Japan they, they do tend to wear the belt more, with the exception of Naito, but he's he's that rare exception where he abuses he just abuses the IC belt, which which is great and fits in his character. But everyone else wears the belt. It's a prestigious thing to wear. And I can remember even going in some diners when Hulk Hogan was champion. Jeez, how knows 30, 40 years ago. He would go into places and wear the belt. You would see them in the airport wearing the belt. It was a thing to wear the championship and not pack it away. They're like, hey, I'm the world champion. And I'm going to let everyone know. And they enjoyed the limelight. To some degree, I think AJ Styles enjoys that and he embodies it. So to me, I, uh, kudos to AJ Styles. Samoa so Joe, cool. he's just vicious, mean, one bad guy you don't want to meet in Dark Alley, some nasty, even nastier than Daytona Beach. It's pretty nasty. Again, AJ is a smarter wrestler. Uses his head. And, and to me, this really felt like a New Japan match for AJ. It was really fun. AJ Styles seemed to enjoy himself. Again, no matter what AJ thinks of, of the Saudi Arabia whole, whole, sh whole shebang, he's a, he's a consummate professional, and he carries himself as such. AJ Styles, not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. And Samoa Joe, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. I mean, this was such a fun match. I think the only reason I gave it a surf and turf rating.
Does that have seemed semi short? I mean, I think they could have had this match go way longer. That's still would have been good. But the thing is, AJ Styles has so many ways to beat you, and they're all realistic. You get hit with a flying forearm to your head, you're being knocked out. You're having your knee bent in ways that should be bent. You're going to be knocked out. You're going to say, I give, I give, I give. You get dropped on your on your face and chest. The styles clash. You're going to be knocked out. It's so realistic and it's so plausible that AJ Styles has so many ways to win and he's smart enough to get out of the Coquina Clutch. Samoa Joe's smart enough how to, how to put you in the Coquina Clutch. I mean, again, this was an amazing surf and turf quality match. This is so good. And then we had Braun versus Brock. And Brock is beastly looking. He's in that UFC fighting shape. Cool. Again, another man you do not want to meet in a dark alley. Some really bad city. He looks like he could rip the head off goats and then cook them. Uh, eat goat steak. Or he looks like he would kill his own cows with his own hands and just have a steak dinner. I mean, he's that good looking. And this was, it was a short match. I couldn't believe what happened, but again, it was announced. Aaron Corbin, of course, holds the belt, Universal Championship belt. After Braun's antics, Baron smacks him in the head with the belt. Ooh, that's a good start to any match. It's like, Baron's like, I'm going to pick my champion. A very simple storyline, a very effective storyline. It was a short match. Um, after that, Braun, actually, he kicks out of three F5s. And then he had another F5 out of the ring, which was an amazing spot. And then I think there was one more F5. And then Brock gave him an, one final F5 for good measure. And it took six F5s for the win. I gave this a surf and turf rating. Because it really accomplished two things. One, it shows Baron Corbin as the heel authority figure. I'm going to pick my champion. You jump me. It's not going to be you. You want to be nice to me. You want to kiss my boots and say how great a person I am. You want to become, well, in, in complex terms, a sycophant. You want to say how great I am. I'll give you everything. You're going to beat me up, toss me around. You're not getting any. So did that. One, Bond looks so really strong. The F5 is the finisher that finishes off everyone. It normally only takes one F5. It took six F5s. That's five plus one. To finish off Braun. So that makes Braun look amazingly strong. And the fact that he kicked out of three of them. So that's awesome. Two. There was the third thing. Brock just. Like a beast. Do you really need more than that? So again. Even though it was a short match. Again. Six to fives. A headshot with a belt. It was a headshot with a belt, too, which is really good. They don't do that often enough. But I guess when they do do it, they do it with purpose. So this made sense. This was, to me, a surf and turf match. If we have Brock win like this, hey, again, this is the theater of the absurd. You might as well do the absurd. It was that good. I had a smile on my face. All the sellers were like, 
<gasps> and they were all wowed. They got their money's worth. A good cream soda. Paying $10 million or whatever ridiculous number, you're getting your money's worth. I think there was also some like alleged rumor that some Saudi prince wanted to buy the WWE for like $7 billion. I don't know. I mean, you start throwing that, that, that billion word around, and I'm sure that even gets Vince McMahon. He probably wouldn't have any creative control, but he has 7 billion other things he could do, I think. And this led to the, to the finals. And this is, this is really the downside of the whole crown jewel. It was Miz versus Dolph. I thought it was going to be pretty good. It's, it's something new, something you haven't seen. And there were stakes involved. If the Miz lost, he was going to get fired. If Drew lost, Dolph would probably beat him up. So there, there were some stakes involved. And then, so, so Miz attacks, attacks Dolph early. Again, the ref kicks, kicks Drew out. They've seen enough of his antics. Miz does a smart thing, attacks, goes after Dolph fairly early in the match. Um, I don't know. I what he did. I think he tried something on the outside of the ring. Miz hurt his knee. Or kayfabe hurt, hurt his knee, whatever. He landed on his leg funny. And hurt his knee. And the referee was going to say, eh eh. No contest. Dolph wins by forfeit. Shane McMahon did come to ringside. Oddly enough, Stephanie wasn't there, but Baron Corbin was. Baron Corbin is like, he can't wrestle? Great. Raise Dolph's hand. Dolph number, Dolph number one. Raw number one. Shane said, eh, eh. Raw is another number one. <laughs> Oh, there it is. Well, you know which other number one I'm thinking of. Oh, no! All right, this thing's getting old. I'm sorry about that, folks. My little five dollar lapel mic. Oh, whoops, getting old. Beat up, I have to fix that later. Not a thing to fix. Or get a new one. It cost me five bucks. But, I mean, this was okay to that point. And then Shane McMahon inserts himself into the match. Yeah. Once he does that, it goes from a good match to a ham sandwich match. Because everyone knows Shane McMahon, he's going to book himself strong. And what an effing letdown screw job that was. It's like a big F you from the WWE. Shane wins. The crowd got hyped. Again, they're not used to WWE booking. They're enjoying it. Shane's enjoying it. Shows the authority figure taking control and doing stuff. Does not cut it. Maybe Saudi Arabia. Not here in USA. 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 And then, final match, Degeneration X versus the Brothers of Destruction, Kane and the Undertaker. Shane 
Shawn Michaels looks old. Um, it's kind of a classic plotting moves. It was a nostalgia filled match. It made you re recall every match they've ever had in the past. Uh, Triple H gets a, the hot tag. This match goes on way too long, though. It wasn't that long, but it felt long. Um, HP, uh, Shawn Michaels can still kip up. Power to him. I did one kip up once, and I felt I pulled something along my spine. So, ever since then, I never did it again. However, Triple H is never going to do a moonsault again. Not after the one he pulled, again, going from the inside out. I even forget if it was off the second rope. That's his last moonsault ever. Um, again, you had your moment where all the men were down, the brothers of destruction. Just sit up. Um, Kane and I just did that. I mean, it was like a nostalgia filled match. Again, I understand the Saudis, probably the Saudi Arabian people probably haven't seen these wrestlers before, and this is something new to them. This match would have been amazing 25 years ago? 30 years ago? Now? Not so much. This was another ham sandwich match. Why is not giving a ham sandwich out a can of soup? It did have its feel good moments. Again, it it did bring back moments of nostalgia. It wasn't terrible. Wasn't great either, though. And that ended the show again to a bevy of fireworks. I give credit where credit's due. Thank you, Saudi Arabia, for allowing the WWE to have all those amazing fireworks. And overall, it was really, if you caught the first half of the show like I did, because I did have to go to work in the gym and do some other things, it was amazingly fun. That second half, not so much fun. Again, I would like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. I do promise to get the girlfriend up on this relatively soon. Um, again, like, share, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think about, about Crown Jewel. I know one person disagreed with my raw comments. Hey. You can feel free to disagree with me. I like that. It would be better if you left a comment, though. And even if you delete a comment, I would delete and said, You are terrible, Hobo Tom. Go back to collecting aluminum. I can say, You know what? Just for your comment, I'm going to post a video in your honor. So again, I'd like to thank everyone for watching again. Probably on Sunday, I'll get to Lucha Underground. Again, everyone have a good night, and it is Red Wine Friday. I know it sounds old of me, but if you are going to drink red wine, please do so in the comfort of your own home. Do not go out and drive. Have a good night, guys. Bye. Bye. And I am back. And let's go over the second half of the show, because that was also really good and really... Well... Obscure. So then for the second round, you had The Miz versus Rey Mysterio. Miz is smart. He knows Rey Mysterio is tired. He goes for a series of quick pins. Again, the smart tactical wrestler. I can, I can identify with that. I, I like that. It means he's showing brains versus bronze. And again, it's all about The Miz and his style that he wrestles. His style.